Ocean County 2017. A lot of changes, although you can't really see them from the surface, but they're happening. Uh, explosive population booms in the northern and southern ends. A lot of development going on. A lot of changes in terms of the way we live, our culture, and our economics, our environment, our energy needs. All of these are changing as we move through the second decade of the 21st century. What's the state of Ocean County in 2017? What are the goals and what are the, what are the objectives of the Board of Freeholders? We're going to find out as we speak with Ocean County Freeholder Director Joe Vicari. Thanks for coming in. You know, it's my pleasure to be here, especially talking about 2017. And as Director of the Board, this is my 11th term as Director of the Board of Freeholders, and it does change. There's no question about it since I first started many years ago until today. Uh, what are we dealing with now? Well, we are recovering now. It's in a process, uh, but it's coming along well as far as Super Storm Sandy. There's no question about it. It was absolutely devastating. Uh, we were recovering now, still in the process from 2008 to downturn in the housing market. Uh, but the good news is that the quality of life in Ocean County is still here. And one of my goals as a, as a county freeholder, everyone is concerned with one thing, affordability. Can I afford to live in Ocean County? Can I afford to raise a family? Can I afford to retire in Ocean County? And the good news is there's no question about it. And what I work hard with the, the, other, the other members of the Board of Freeholders is to make sure not only is it affordable, but to control spending and still at the same time to provide the core services that are so important uh, to our seniors, to our veterans, uh, to the average middle class family. But most of all, we want to give our young people opportunities, the great opportunities that, that I had when I was growing up uh, that they deserve for the future generation, not only to our children, but to our grandchildren. And what I'm proud to say is that we have a blueprint uh, that I'm following for 2017 as we work hard with the rest of the Board of Freeholders and different agencies throughout the state of New Jersey to make sure I can maintain those goals for the next 12 months. What are some of the key points on this blueprint? Okay, the blueprint, the, the main thing everyone is concerned with is one thing, taxes. Taxes are very important to us, and as a county freeholder, what I'm going to do when I uh, meet with uh, my, my staff to uh, design the uh, budget for this year, I say, we don't want to raise taxes. It's going to be a stable tax rate. And I'm not only talking about this year, I'm also talking about next year also. You know, you can't do a budget just for one year or two years. You have to look ahead. And there are no surprises with what we do in Ocean County as far as the taxes. It's the second largest county in the state of New Jersey with land. We have the largest road system. We have a lot of things to do. But I think it's so important, so I can tell the people of Ocean County, is that we will make it affordable. I'm not going to have any major tax increases, but the services are also important. So that's a, that's a big picture. And look at the state of New Jersey. There's no question about it. In the last seven years, the bond rating went down 10 times. What happened in Ocean County? We have one of the finest and strongest AAA bond ratings, not only in the state, but probably in the United States of America for a county this size. And we're not going to jeopardize that. I'm not going to spend money that we don't have. I'm not going to do a program that cannot support itself. We're not going to do that. You know, it's very easy as public officials to go and put up a building and put up different projects and say, you know something, doesn't look nice and doesn't look good. But who's going to pay for it? It's not going to be me and you, it's going to be our children, our grandchildren. Because what's been happening in New Jersey and with a lot of other counties, especially the major cities throughout the state of New Jersey, they've spent money that they have to now repay, and they can't do that. And they raise taxes, and that has a major impact on the quality of life, the value of their property, and the future of, uh, of any county. Our future in Ocean County is excellent. There's no question about it. I feel good about it. And that's part of my blueprint as I continue over the next 12 months. But still, you've got to have some capital projects that are in the pipeline right now. What, what are some of the major ones? Well, one, one, one program we do is, of course, with our road prop, problems right now. Uh, we fix them. We have a, the, the largest road system in the state of New Jersey, but we have to plow the snow. We have to keep it clean. Uh, we're now doing a master plan as far as the traffic in the northern part of Ocean County as things continue. I fight hard, as you probably know, for Route 9 to dualize it, not just in Lakewood, but from Lakewood all the way down to Little Lake Harbor, the entire length. You just can't look at one section. When I represent 33 towns in Ocean County, and I run at large throughout the county of Ocean, I'm still working on uh, what we spoke about many, many times, the Blue Comet, the rail line that took place uh, many years ago. I'm not going to give up. I remember when uh, George Buckwood was freeholder, he remembers the Blue Comet. We're talking about it all the time. And I hope perhaps with the money that's coming in, and we hope we get money from 
uh, the, the new president, Donald Trump, on infrastructure. Do you realize that you can take a train and it, at one time from Jersey City to Atlantic City? Do you know that would, what that would do to help revitalize Ocean County, Monmouth County, and Atlantic City, having a rail line that's affordable for passengers? That's a major plus for us. And we need a vision, and that's what's so important with public officials. They need a vision for not today or 10 years, 15 or 20 years from today. So when they look back, they can say, look at those improvements. Look at what we did with the LaGuardia State Parkway when Joe Buckley was chairman. I mean, some great changes because of one person does make a difference, can make a difference, and will continue to make a difference. And that's why it's so important to us. Okay, but let's look practically at this rail line. You had, there was a rail line. That is now part of its a linear part. Part of the right away is Route 9. Um, where does a rail line go? You know, most, most of it is still there. They have to look at it. But, you know, if we take a negative aspect saying, well, where does it go, and what about the environmental impact? Let's say, you know, something, we want to do it, and, you know, where there's, where there's a will, there's a way, and at least we can look at it. So they can't look back later on and say, you know something, we didn't care about the future. The best way to move people, in my opinion, is rail. It's not buses, it's not cars, there's no other way of doing it. It's rail lines. It's good for the environment. And look at the cost of traveling. I talk to many people that travel every day out of Ocean County, and look what they pay in tolls, and look what they pay in gasoline. More highways, it's not, that's not the answer. In my opinion, let's take a real good look at rail service. Look at the billions of dollars they put into North Jersey with the light rail. Go up North Jersey, and where's it coming from? It's coming from the taxpayers in Ocean County. So we are supporting and subsidizing transportation up in North Jersey, and we're getting nothing for it. You know, one time when George Buckwell was a freeholder, uh, when I became a freeholder in the 1980s, and around that time, they were able to, what we have now, put a rail line in for about $250, $300 million. Now that's, that's really rel relatively very cheap. It's easy to do. There's no question about it. But, you know, let's take a look at it. Let's be sincere. Let's say, look what we can do. Look at the light rails they put up, for an example, in Jersey City, in Bayonne. It's unbelievable what they did. They didn't say, well, we can't do it. What are the obstacles? They said, you know, we're going to do it. And that's what we have to do. We okay, need a can-do feeling to do those, this. Those are on existing tracks. You don't have the existing tracks here. Where do they go? We, we have the right-of-way in place in most of the places. And fortunately for Clayton, he's doing 16 miles of it. He's revitalizing it. So again, we just take a, take a look at that. It's not going to be easy. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But that's one of the alternatives that we should explore. All right. Let's, now, let's backtrack a second to the traffic study that's taking place in Lakewood. Uh, a couple of things with that. Dualization of Route 9. Uh, last I checked with the North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority when they had their open house, they said they were looking at maybe repainting some lines so that you had a turn lane in the middle of the highway as opposed to opening it up to more lanes. Um, are you satisfied with that? No. We want to dualize uh, two lanes each way. You know, we started to talk about this when I was mayor of the town coming back some years ago. I was mayor of Tom's River, as you know, for five terms. And we said, no, we want it done the same way they would do that, like in Monmouth County, like in other places of the state of New Jersey. And we haven't been treated fairly with state and federal dollars. And we have to get more money in here. And, you know, we have to be loud and local. The population is growing. There's a need for it. And going back many years ago, what the County Board of Freeholders did, because they weren't doing Route 9, we did some of the county roads we expanded. Old Freeholder Road, New Hampshire Road, some of the other roads up in the northern part of the county. So we used taxpayers' money to do that work. That should have been done by the state of New Jersey. Unfortunately, it wasn't done. And, you know, we need a loud voice. We should complain. Uh, as you know, next year there will be a race for governor. And the first thing that we should do before uh, anyone is supported, whether it be Democrat or Republican, what are your plans for Route 9 throughout all of Ocean County? Very, very important. Our population in the winter is 580,000 people. In the summer, peak season, 1.3 million people. So the population does expand as more and more people come in here. Transportation is very important. You mentioned the gubernatorial race, and that's a critical issue. You also mentioned that the, uh, the state's budget rating went down ten times ten in the last times. seven years under the current governor, who is a friend of Ocean County. Are you concerned that if a Democrat is in, or a Republican who is not a friend of Ocean County, that this is going to make the, the job even more difficult to get that money? Well, you know, it's always difficult, and the reason is because North Jersey has all the power, let's face it. Uh, when anything happens, they have a lot of political clout. Uh, the two United States Senators are from North Jersey, okay? They have more clout, more voices, because they vote in mass, 
And look at, for an example, school funding. Most of the money goes to the urban areas. And the suburbs have been forgotten. And, and what we have to do is make it clear, especially in 2017 during the election, uh, when we have our state senators running and we have our assembly people running and when they vote for a new governor, is that we want our fair share. I want equity in what we get for Ocean County. And we're not getting the equity that we deserve and that we should be getting. All right, well, you know, let's examine that for a second because one of the reasons that the money goes there is because of the voting blocks. And one of the reasons the voting blocks are so strong is the population density. A lot of that population density comes from the affordable housing regulations, which push a lot of the development back into the urban areas in the form of basically credits. So now the entire state, every town, uh, just about, is under obligation once again to build more affordable housing. Do you think affordable housing would create bigger numbers for Ocean County and a stronger, a stronger uh, base of support for the kind of objectives you're? I look at a different way. I look at let's bring and more. Do you money. advocate more affordable housing? I I look at it this way: bring more money into Ocean County. For an example, that's why I support the joint joint base. That's why I support tourism, which is four point six billion dollars a year. We need the jobs. If people have the money and the jobs, they can buy housing. I think we need more affordable housing, but I think right now the housing market is low. I mean, let's face it, that you can't have a house with an affordable or any regular market value house unless you have a good paying job. We need good paying jobs in Ocean County. And unfortunately, I'll be honest with you, a lot of people are traveling up North Jersey. It's a, it's a lot of money for them with the tolls and with, with gasoline. We need corporations, we need industry, and we need the light rail system, in my opinion, and that would revitalize it. We need something to revitalize what's taking place in Ocean County. And a key, and one thing, word is jobs. We need good paying jobs where people get a fair salary, they get hospitalization, they can put some money away for their children to go to college, and they have a pension plan. And we don't have that. Where is the big money? People go up to North Jersey, New York metropolitan area. Look at the difference in salaries. It's like it's unbelievable. People can get almost twice as much for doing the same amount of work. We have, as a selling point, a very good, talented workforce. So I can go to any major corporation and say, look, we have an excellent workforce, come to Ocean County, but we don't have the tax incentives that they have in other parts of the state of New Jersey, there's no question about it. Uh, for an example, look at Jersey City, for an example. Some of the tax abatements they give and some, some of the, what they do, they can entice people to come over from the New York area into, into Jersey City. I know Jersey City well, very well. I remember when it was a blighted area, and now it's the complete opposite. So they have to think in, in, spots. in, in different spots in downtown uh, where, where I grew up. The problem with that is that the abatements are falling back on the taxpayers who have been there forever. That's correct. Who really can afford it the least. Well, the developers are doing quite well. Doing quite well, but the jobs are there. And you know, there's certain trade-offs. My feeling is, as you know, I'm an educator and we, we, we teach students to get a good job and, and make, it, make it a, a decent living, is we need jobs in Ocean County. We have a talented workforce. We have an excellent vocational school. We have a good college system with Ocean County College and Canyon University where it's affordable. But when they leave, I think it's a hurtful feeling sometimes when I say, you know, I'm not going to live in Ocean County. I'm going to move out because I need a job and I don't want to travel back and forth. Do you realize what it takes out of a family, a hardworking family traveling back and forth every single day, getting up 5.30 in the morning, getting home 7, 8 o'clock at night, and the money it costs, and, and when they have several children, and they want to take care of their family. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. So then, would, would you call this one of your goals for 2017, is a new, a, a new initiative to attract jobs? To no, attract no question about it, and especially right now, because now, you know, at one time, I didn't have to be, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, that's one of them. I didn't have to be a cheerleader for Ocean County. Why? The economy was good, uh, people had money, there was a lot of building taking place, there were a lot of jobs taking place. But since 2008, we never really recovered from that. And to add to it is was when we had the Superstorm going back four years ago, and it's not like it used to be. At one time, it was, it was really growing so fast and there was so much money, people said, wait a minute, why don't we stop? We're going too fast, too many things are happening, the price of housing is going up too much. Uh, I can't get a, a worker to come. There was a shortage of workers, no question about it. And what happened now, uh, we, ha we have this slump in the economy, there's no question about it. So is that one of my goals? No question about it. Uh, just as I said before, it has to be affordable, we need good, decent jobs, and we have to provide educational opportunities. 
Well, I know that you're the liaison to senior services, and I know that's an important, that, that, that's, that's something to which you devote a lot of attention. What, do you have any plans that over and above the services that are being offered now? I know several, several million dollars just went out for, for meal plans. That, that's, that's an important program for me. We have, with, with the caregivers and seniors, about 200,000 people. And the seniors are no longer 70, 75, 80 years old, 90, 95, and 100 years old. And we found out several years ago that a lot of our seniors do not have money for food. They live on $950 per month with Social Security, or less than sometimes, a single spouse in a house. And we had to put more money into home-delivered meals, meals on wheels. And uh, there was no money in the budget. We cut out the areas and we put an extra $250,000 into the budget. And let me tell you why that was so important to me personally. It was one day in a hospital in an emergency room. One day, I could feed that senior citizen for the entire year with home delivered meals, where they can go bring the, the meals, hot meals to their house, they check on them, they can live in independence, they have that integrity, which is so important to them because they, they're very proud people. And don't take that as a charity case. That's not the case. If they have the money, they can donate $2. They don't have to. Some of them don't have the $2. And, you know, it's a, it's a shame. But how do I sit here as, as a public official? and watch an American that worked all their lives, served in World War II, served in Korea, raised their family, paid all of their bills, now because of their age and they don't have money, they're not going to go hungry in Ocean County. And we have one of the finest programs in the United States, including if you look at some of the programs in Florida. And we take care of our senior citizens and we know how to say thank you. And how do you say thank you? It's when they need something, we are there for them. Now, we did not get any more money over the last several years from the state of New Jersey or from the federal government. But we went to the county and we put the extra money in to make up for it. And you know, there's about two and a half billion dollars a year that comes in in retirement and Social Security. And that money is spent locally. And we have to look at that because they buy locally. So when they have the extra money in their pocket, and you know for a senior citizen sometimes that extra ten dollars is a lot of money for them. And they can go out and they can do things or if they're in their home. And we made, we made it very clear that we're not, gonna, we're not going to let them down. And our promise to the senior citizen is that if they need something, we will be there, even if we have to increase the programs in time. Mm -hmm. You're also an environmental bug. You, the Bardiga Bay is a very important uh, part of, of, of your overall vision. It always has been. You're the, you're the man who put the pump out boats out there. You know, I, I really think a lot of uh, Bardiga Bay is a is national estuary. is very important to us. Uh, here's what happened. Before I even came here, they did some building too close to the waterways and they didn't plan for it. Now we're trying to compensate for that in certain ways with certain restrictions. But I can't go back to the 1940s and 50s and make those changes. And so what we try to do for, through educational programs, we tell people, for example, with fertilizer and taking things, it runs into the Barnegat Bay. We have the pump out boats. They do a great job. We put another one this year. And they do two things. One is to make sure the water is clean and also they make sure they patrol the area, and if anyone needs any help, if there's any safety problems. But Barnegat Bay is something that's so important to us. And let me tell you what Ocean County is all about when you talk about the environment. Barnegat Bay is extremely important to us, just like the 44 miles of ocean that we have in Ocean County. We have the most ocean you know, in the state of New Jersey here, and we have to protect that. And we encourage people through educational programs, protect the dunes, protect the waterways. Don't throw plastic in the drains. and and the storm drains. Most of the water goes, as you know, into a storm drain. It goes into the lakes, it goes into the lagoons, it goes in, into the Barnegat Bay, but sooner or later it goes, it goes into a waterway. And we're very cautious about that. And the environmentalists have done an outstanding job, and they deserve the credit to make sure. And remember, most of the water that we drink in Ocean County comes from groundwater. Mm -hmm. Very important to us. So it's not just Barnegat Bay, it's the Pine Lands. And uh, we have a very extensive program to purchase public lands. Uh, we went to the same, we went to the people going back in the 1990s and said, you know, you can tax yourself 1.2 cents. And it's a dedicated fund to buy open lands, and it will always be open, always be open to the people. You can always use it. And now, 60 percent of all of the land in Ocean County is preserved for future generation. A hundred years from today, that that 60 percent of the land will still be opened, and that's what's so important to us because at one time we were growing so fast, they were cutting all the trees down. And it was just mass cutting down trees that were putting up homes. And I think it's a good thing because when the economy went down and there were many homes in foreclosure, uh, you, know, you know, it was a terrible thing. 
And that's something else that really bothers me. We're talking about affordable housing. Look at all those homes in foreclosure. I cannot believe the banking system and the federal government can't have a program. They have those homes that are empty three, four, five years, and you mean to tell me people are not living in good housing, substandard housing, and we have houses that are out there that are empty for all of those years? I think that's a terrible thing. I think the state officials and the federal officials should say, you know something, we have a need, we have residents that want to get in these homes, work some kind of a deal out. Why keep the house empty for five years when you can put somebody in there, even if they pay partial? They're in there, they're paying taxes, they're maintaining the property, and they're living and raising their family in a good environment. I believe in the, the, the home ownership. I think it's a good thing. I think we should encourage it. But let's take a look now at the markets that we have right now, the market values, and what's on the market right now, and, and make sure we do everything possible to get people into a home that's already pre-existing. Finally, we need to look at crime. Crime has become an, over, an overarching topic in Ocean County. Uh, the heroin trade is unre unrelenting. You have a very imaginative prosecutor who has gone way outside the lines to find ways to solve this problem. Um, I have to assume he's got your support on this. We are very fortunate to have Joe Coronado as a prosecutor. He's one of the best prosecutors, uh, not only in Ocean County, but in the state of New Jersey. He's very passionate. He's experienced. And I'll, I'll tell you why substance abuse, whether it be drinking or drugs, and now it's drugs, very important to me. I've been in education for almost 40 years. I have children. I have grandchildren. I want to make sure my grandchildren grow up in a drug-free society. I want to make sure that we have not only educational programs, but intervention programs. I think it's easy to help them before any child gets into a situation like that. You know, it's easier and cheaper to help a troubled child than a broken man or woman. And unfortunately, putting them in jail is not the answer. That's not the answer. The answer is, let's help them before time. And there were certain signs, and people should know the signs. And a parent should know if their child has a problem. Call us up. Let us know what's happening. Fortunately for us, Joe Coronado, working with our sheriff, uh, Mike Mastronati, they're very in touch with what's taking place. We work very closely with all of the schools, with all of the, the police departments in, in Ocean County. But that's our main concern. There's no question about it. And, you know, whenever I go to a viewing and see a young child, it hurts. I go home and I say, thank God, you know, we have children in a safe environment, but you never, never know what's going to happen. And, you know, I came here, I'll be honest with you, from North Jersey. I wanted to move away from that. But, you know, there's 21 counties. Every county has the same problems. Uh, our prosecutor, you mentioned before, is very knowledgeable and he's working hard. And we don't overlook anything. He's very intense in what he's doing. He does a good job. He's very proactive. I think the most important thing today is to be proactive to eliminate any kind of drug or alcohol situation. And I'm satisfied with the programs. Or well, we will do more. And more has to be done as far as rehabilitation, more uh, educational programs. But, you know, it's coming to light because of Joe Coronado that there is a problem. And we're going to solve that problem. We're going to do it. If someone wants help, they'll never be denied help. And that's what's so important to us. Mr. McCary, you have the reins for the full year. Okay. If you have one objective that you want to reach between now and December 31st, what would that be? We were just talking about it. What can I do to help youngsters growing up? What can I do to help people that have a drug problem? What can I do to help people that are depressed? And whenever I see that kind of a situation, that's the future of the United States. Our future is one thing. Our greatest natural resources are young people. And when I see them going the wrong way, whether it be not with crime, just crime, but also with drug and substance abuse, is a very serious thing. And I look at it again, you know, I've always came from a very close family. Uh, I've always, as you know, an, an educator. And now one of the reasons why I got involved in running for office is I want to make a difference. At one time I said, you know something, let's create opportunities for our children. But how do I create opportunities for our children if they have a problem with substance abuse? That's what the serious problem is right now. So again, it's not just my concern. I believe uh, I speak for the entire Board of Freeholders and with all those in law enforcement and education and every mom and dad that's out there. Everyone has a parent, as a, a, a child, a son or a daughter, and everyone has a grandchild. We'll look to see what you've accomplished at the end of this year. We'll look uh, back on this and, and we'll have a report card. And I will be there and you can grade me. All righty. Thank you very much, Teach. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. It's good to see you again and uh, stop by anytime. My pleasure. Thank you.